Well, it's good to be with you. Thank you, Steve, for wearing it. How could I miss you in that shirt? But I did. Uh, thanks for filling in. We uh, took a trip to Florida, had a good time. I got a ticket. <laughs> Wasn't for speeding. I parked in front of the house we were staying in. And when I parked there on the private property, apparently uh, I was headed in the wrong direction and the local police department decided to take a picture of it and leave me a little slip of paper. I had a thought, you know, could leave that slip of paper on there, probably rain. You know, they thought that through. And they printed out on paper that doesn't just dissolve in the rain. They've had this happen before. Well, I wasn't very happy with that. I'll just be honest with you. I was not a happy camper. So uh, what, well, what will I do? I'm going to fight this. That's what I'm going to do. What's in a speeding ticket? Fifty dollars, not even a warning. We're not there for very long. And I thought, well, I see how you make your money, right? Had all these arguments in my head. Not arguments, but, but I was going to plead my case. That's what I was going to do. You ever felt like that? Like you had a pretty good case? And the more you thought about it, hmm. But well, uh, we were on an island. I said, am I representing Jesus on this island? Hmm. Well, now that gave me some pause. So I had to think about this. Plus, my kids knew about it. And, uh, you know. So, <laughs> and probably the grandkids knew about it at some point. So I was going to go pay the fine. And I attempted to. And cash, but they, they don't accept. Well, they didn't have change. That's what it was. So I'm mailing it in tomorrow. And uh, I will. $50. Did I say $50? Well, part of this lesson is about letting go of things. Letting go of your past. And so as I was walking in the police department, I had all kinds of things, clever things that I could say, you know, <laughs> maybe not Jesus like, maybe Jesus wouldn't say these things. And so I ditched those as I approached the counter and I said, I've been gifted one of these. <laughs> and she smiled and uh, and uh, she said, parking, he heading the wrong way. I said, yeah, I was on private property. It's just amazing. She said to me, well, it's the law here in Florida. And I had an Ohio State hat on. She said, it's also the law in Ohio. So that stung a little bit. <laughs> you know this. So, hmm, I heard. Got my wallet out, and Lee had given me my allowance. It was just barely over $50. But I tried to pay with cash. Oh, well, we don't have any change, you know, so well, you'll have to, we'll have to do something else. I said, well, this is a problem, isn't it? Yep, yep, yep. I said, you know what? I bet you find people that are not very happy when they come in here, and you have to take it all in, don't you? She goes, well, yes, I do. I said, well, I don't want to make your life any rougher than it already is. I said, I'll gladly pay the ticket. Um, I said, I'm not happy about it, you know. She said, well, I know. So I'm going to pay the ticket. And I noticed other people parking the way I did. So I took pictures on my cell phone. This was before I went into the police department. I had all these pictures. And I showed her a couple. Oh, look, at this, look at this one. I must be on this other, other part. Wasn't our. Nope, nope. That was right here. I made sure of that. 
you know, yeah, yeah. She goes, well, it appears like they're breaking the law as well. And I figured this out. The law doesn't care about my feelings. The law doesn't care that my allowance was barely over $50. Doesn't care about any of that. So I had all these pictures. I'm, we're coming back. And I had all these pictures. Oh, what are these pictures? Pictures of vehicles parked the wrong way. You know, what do you do with those? Well, I deleted all of them, I think. Because it doesn't matter. You ever get stuck in the past? You ever let it affect your demeanor? Did you ever let your past, what has happened to you, maybe a day ago, three days ago, maybe it's happened earlier this morning, eat at you, work on you, cause you to develop some phrases or some, some arguments that might be fitting at the right time to tell that person or that agency? Never. Not any of you, I know. It's only me. Well, I decided, you know, you can ruin your vacation. This happened early on, like I think the first day. And I had the thought, don't park here. Park here. But I didn't listen to myself. And now I'm thinking, well, maybe it was God telling me. <laughs> no. Hmm, should have done that, but I didn't do it. So I'm left with paying a $50 fine. I want to talk to you this morning about living in faith. Cleanse from our past sins. There are some things that we need to let go. Are you nostalgic? You like the past? I, I do. Well, I don't like that $50 fine that I'll be paying tomorrow. I don't like that. Did I mention that to you already? See how easy it is to slip into the past, the parts that we don't like. Hmm. Well, my parents used to, and they still do, I think, love family reunions. How many in here, and how many of you watching this now, love family reunions? Well, I'll tell you as a child, I did not love them. There was food, but I was forced to eat things I didn't want to eat. You know, I. I started telling people I was allergic to bananas until my mom heard someone say, it's too bad Denny's allergic to bananas. He's not allergic to bananas. He's just making that up. So, he, yeah. Well, I learned not to do that too. I was a child, right? I was a child. I did not like these reunions because, my, well, my parents made me go. I didn't have a choice. Could I stay home at four years old, at five years old? No. No, you have to go. And so I went. Well, my point of disconnect was that as a child, I didn't have the perspective of time. My parents had that. And they loved to go visit with people. And now that I'm not a child anymore, I sort of like that as well. And I can see the great wisdom and the love for family reunions. I see that. I... When I go to certain places, maybe where I grew up, I can be sort of nostalgic as I drive through the town and realize that things have changed, like they tore my high school down. They, they tore every grade school that I went to down. I'm thinking, is this me? Is it just me? Nope, they're gonna have some progress. I'm gonna tear, out, tear down these old buildings. My mother got me, bought me, <laughs> It's interesting, bought a piece of the old high school, part of the slate that was on one of the chalkboards. Now I have a little chalkboard, Waverly High School, you know, chalkboard. And uh, have that to remember my years there. Situations change, people change. Um, being nostalgic is one thing and that's not bad, but living in the past can keep us from loving or living today. It really can. You know, you can be in the ocean thinking about what happened a few hours earlier with your ticket. And you're floating in the ocean thinking, I am not a happy camper surrounded by all of this water, which we all would love to have here. I thought to myself, I'm floating in the very thing I'm praying for, you know, when I return home, that we'll have some rain. 
and be over this drought. But we can, we can think about the past and maybe sometimes be bitter about it or let it affect us. And it keeps us from really living today. So we learn the lessons from the past, but we really can't stay there. We shouldn't stay there. I love what the apostle Peter wrote in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. I'll just um, take a snippet from verse 3 and verse 6. He says, for you've spent enough time in the past doing what the pagans choose to do. In verse 6, but live according to God in regard to the spirit. This is the way you used to be. Now you have something different. Live this way. This is the way you should live. And I've known situations uh, where people would stay away from family reunions. I know this is a foreign thought to, pro to, to all of you for sure. But people would stay away from family reunions. They're afraid that someone will reunite them with their painful past. Or they'll say something about it. You know, just bring it up. Maybe you've been part of a reunion like that. And boy, that gets exciting real fast when someone brings something up that they shouldn't bring up. And someone's willing to go there. <laughs> and then they have words. And then for a year... You hear, did you see what Aunt so-and-so said to Uncle so-and-so? Did you hear that? What a disturbance that caused, you know. Good times, right? <laughs> Just good times. You, want, you don't want to revisit those things. But spiritually speaking, I want, to, I want us to think spiritually this morning. We have just a couple minutes left. I want us to think spiritually. Yeah, it's quarter after. So we got to get moving. I shouldn't have told the story about the ticket. I know. I know what you're thinking. See, I'm over it by now. Satan wants nothing more than to reunite you with your past. You know that, right? He wants you to think about it. He wants you to dwell on it. He wants you to let that be present. And you feel it and you sense it just like it happened yesterday. You know, scar tissue <coughs> bleeds easily. Is that right, Steve? If you can get through it, yeah, yeah. Boxers sometimes have a lot of scar tissue. And you can think, well, maybe he's not so good. He has a lot of scar tissue on his face. Maybe he's been hit a lot, you know. Satan tries to up, open up old wounds. He tries to make you bleed from those old scars, those wounds that you have. Satan tries to get us to forget that we've been cleansed from our past. Second Peter chapter one, verses five through 11. God's word is designed to heal. Did you know that? Not wound you further. So it's safe to recall it. That's what we should recall. And I'm telling you, that's what helped me as I walked every step through that police department. The other day. It really did help me. I thought about some scripture. And I have a saying that. I developed on my own. And it goes like this. Jesus won't let me get away with this. I say that to myself sometimes. You know, Jesus. Now I can do whatever I want. Right. Satan would tempt me to say or do or be this way. But Jesus, Jesus, if I'm truly following Jesus, Jesus won't let me get away with this. I'm not truly following him if I take this path or that path. Romans 8 verses 31 through 39. You know this. You've heard this all your life. What then shall we say? Paul says in response to this, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son that gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised, from, uh, was raised to life, is at the right hand of God 
and is interceding for us who shall separate us from the love of Christ. Shall tribulation, shall trouble, hardship, persecution, famine or nakedness or danger or sword as it is written for your sake. We face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm convinced, Paul says, that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Question, church, what separates you from the love of God? A painful past. A painful memory. A wounding that is recalled, that's brought back to the forefront. We should pray for peace and perspective when that happens. We really should. And if it was involving forgiving someone and you remember that event like it was yesterday, like it just happened five seconds ago, you recall it and you can feel yourself getting all. Well, you can feel your blood pressure rising. You can get back into that. Pretty easily, you know, it's just right there. And Satan says, here, climb back in the saddle. See how that feels. Yeah, go ahead. Climb up. I'll help you with your first step here. Now. Go on right off into the sunset and enjoy that for a while. Well. We may need to say instead of, yes, I think I'll. I think I'll remember this for a while and I'll get all bent out of shape again for a while. Instead of that, we may need to say, as we pray for perspective, I remember forgiving that person. Every time it comes up, every time it's an offering of Satan to you to remember, you can say as you pray to God, I remember forgiving this person. Help me, Lord. This is a temptation to, to bring it all back. Help me. Start thinking about how good it felt, thinking about the evil that surrounds that situation. No, no, no. Think on good things. And that's what God brings to mind. He can bring us peace and perspective. And that's what we need times like this. Be careful then about picking up the past. Be very careful. Ask God to help you when you're feeling like you're going to pick it up and you're going to review it. It's not a deep dive into the past. It's just a casual review. There's a danger in that, too. I'll tell you. Ask God to help you. So this morning, three things very quickly. Number one, getting back to God. Number two, enjoying your life in Christ. Number three, being excited about your future, because you do have one. Number one, getting back to God. Psalm 38, verse four. My guilt has overwhelmed me like a burden too heavy to bear. Sometimes that can happen. Psalm 32, five. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord. And you forgave the guilt of of my sin. Notice that you forgave the guilt of my sin. Getting back to God. Jesus tells some some parables, parables of hope for the hurting, the hopeless and the lost. He he tells these stories, these parables in Luke 15. I won't read them for time's sake, but he talks about a lost sheep. He talks about a lost coin. He talks about a lost son. And God's not looking to pound you with guilt and shame. He's not looking to do that. He's looking to find you. He's looking to give you rest, to heal you, and to rejoice over you. That's what these parables or these stories are about. God is helping 
not hurting us. That's what he wants to get across, I believe. So if you're dealing with the guilt of your past sins, not the consequences, but dealing with the guilt of your past sins, you need the latest Jesus update. I was, I woke up and had no internet connection, you know? So my phone says, you need this update. I mean, you really need it right now. So we were getting ready to go and I hit okay, big mistake. That was because it just kept buffering and buffering and buffering. So I shut it down. But this, this Jesus update you need. We all need it. Here it is. First John chapter one, verse nine. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So come back home. Don't stay in the past. Don't wallow around in that. Take God at his word and and just do what he says and believe that he's doing that, that he is faithful and that he is just. Number two, enjoy your life in Christ. Knowing that you're saved. Yeah. First John, chapter five, verse 13. John says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Can you know that you're saved? Can you know that you have eternal life? Yes, you can. How do I know that? It's right here. John writes that. I want you to know this. Because in knowing that, we live in a better way, don't we? We live with peace of mind. Who can take your salvation from you? You're the only one that can say, I don't want this anymore. And who would do that? But God is saving us through Jesus Christ. Romans 5, 9 through 11. Since we have now been justified by his blood. This is what Jody was talking about during the Lord's Supper. How much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him, through Jesus, through this blood of Jesus? Just like the Exodus, which Jody read parts of it to us during the Lord's Supper. For if, verse 10, for if when... We were God's enemies. We were reconciled to him through the death of his son. How much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. We need a good, healthy understanding of grace, God's grace. We can be free of sin, free from sin because of Jesus and only because of Jesus. So number three, be excited about your future. God is great at reuniting people with purpose. He really is. In Philippians chapter three, verses 13 through 14, brothers, Paul says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on to the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. You have sort of the past, the present, and the future there in that context. The past, confidence in the flesh. The present, what we're living in now, faith. Our future. The future is all about resurrection from the dead. Not only can he do that, but he will do that for those that are in him. So our call is heavenward. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 13 through 16. All all these people were still living in faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on the earth. People who say such things show that they're looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they are longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God 
for he has prepared a city for them. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Those from this number have gone on. And, and they're there. God is making it so. He tells us the truth. And so our focus is on Jesus. Living in our faith. Faith in Jesus without a willingness to become like Jesus is empty faith. We become more and more like him. So let's let Jesus reunite, reunite us with our purpose in living. Sort of like he did with the woman at the well in John 4. Or the man we may call Legion that had so many demons in him in Mark 5. So three things. Get back to God. Enjoy your life in Christ and get excited about your future. I hope that you have a great day today. I hope that you're so excited about your future. That's really something. That's a good way to live. People get excited about Friday. Why? Because Saturday's after that, Sunday's after that. That's usually the end of the work week, right? And people enjoy that quite frequently, <laughs> right? We have something much better to be excited about. The heavenly home. The heavenly home. If you're in Christ, make sure that you live as if you're in Christ. Yeah, drop the past. Learn from it, but drop it. Don't let Satan, don't let Satan tempt you into climbing back into the past again. Yeah, think about God's word. Get back to God. Enjoy your life in Christ and get excited about your future. If you need to begin a future with God through Jesus this morning, why don't you let that happen? Turn from your sin, confess him as Lord, be buried with him in baptism. And your sins, says God, will be forgiven. And then you can continue on in your life, knowing that when you confess your sin, if you do sin, you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and purify you from all unrighteousness. It's just like you get up out of the waters of baptism every single time. You confess your sin. So if you need Christ, why don't you come this morning as we stand and sing?